We have traveled all over East Africa, finding hardworking farmers who are making a good life on their shambas. We want to learn from them, turn their farms into good businesses, and help them increase their profits. Join us and see how our farmers benefit from the experts' advice and share their experiences as we shape up their shambas. <laughs> Karibu to the Shamba Shape Up Safari. Welcome to Shamba Shape Up. Today we are on Helen and Fredericks Shamba in Kisi County. Naomi, do you know the slogan, Together Stronger? Oh yes, you know, when people are together, they can achieve a lot. Like Tony and I here. Oh yes, and we want to find out if that is true for our farmers as well. So let's go find out. <laughs> Helen and Frederick are retired and live on this lovely farm near Kisi. Their shamba may be just one and a half acres, but they pack a lot in. <laughs> <laughs> now, how can we help you? You can help us in, uh, if you can advise us on the system of storage in our, of our maize mm -hmm. and other grains, how we can increase our milk production, how we can prevent the death of our animals, because recently mm. we lost two cows. Oh, that's yeah. so bad. Have you ever vaccinated? Not really. We have three cows. Okay. Uh, to vaccinate three cows, <laughs> we couldn't afford it. Ah, <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think that's where the neighbors comes in, you know. We work together yeah. with the neighbors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when we work together, we are stronger. Mm. We'll succeed. Yes, yes, yes. And we'll see what our experts have to say about it. Sounds like we have lots to do. Let's get the tent up and get to work. Mm -hmm. So the tent's up, so what's next? I'm going to see an expert about vaccinating Frederick's cows. Well, I'm going to see whether we can increase uh, Frederick's income by improving his maize storage. But first, we need to help them get a bigger harvest, so we have lots to store. Then Frederick's calf look a bit weak and needs to turn into a strong and healthy cow. Yeah, Tony, there's a lot to be done in one day. Do you think we can finish? Uh, let's give it a try. Well, let's go. Okay. Frederick, there you are. Frederick. Let's go meet our next man. Alex from Unga has looked at the cow shed and is now with the calf and he's not looking happy. Uh, the housing, there's no ventilation. It needs to open up a little bit for the animal to get fresh air given that there's a lot of dung and that will lead to accumulation of urea, the animal will never be comfortable in that environment. Uh, the cubicles where the animals sleep should actually be very comfortable. There are some uh, timber he has placed on the cubicles, the floor of the cubicles. Essentially, it should be actually soft uh, sand or uh, sawdust. And now the walking halley should actually be made of concrete. Yeah. And I can see you have done that. However, the drainage also should be very good so that it will help you actually easily clean the dung. Okay? In the feeding area, you can see also that you have done some few adjustments. The feeding troughs are not very good. You need to make sure that the animals when feeding there should be comfortable and should actually be able to get all the feed. We also need a food storage area, which we are temporarily having a shed. Okay? Yeah. But you should construct something where you can stock other forms of feed, like hay. Time for Caris to get to work, fixing all the things Alex has pointed out. First, Frederick needs to clean the shed so Caris can get on with it. Now, that calf looks like it needs more than a good house to live in. So Fred, yes. how old is your calf? Five months. She looks very small in body. She should actually be having approximately 120 kilos. Okay. What have you been feeding your calf so far? For the last three months, I used to feed her with the two bottles of milk. Mm -hmm. Then after the three months, for the last two months, I've been feeding with the napier grass. Two bottles of milk. Yeah, is it is a, a liter bottle or a... 
one, one liter bottle. One liter bottle. Eh? Yeah. Two bottles in a day. You should actually give your calf colostrum as early as, po as, possible. as possible. If yeah. she will not suckle the mother, then you should actually try to milk that animal and give her colo colostrum. Yeah. Yeah. That is the calf. That will make sure that the immunity system is well developed and she will be resistant to diseases as she grows up. You're supposed to feed your calf milk, which is about 10% of the body weight. Assuming that your calf is 30 kilos when she was born, you're supposed to give 3 liters every day. What is the water intake for a calf? They should be given as much water as they can. They can. What are the feed can the farmer give to the calf? Say six to seven days after the calf has been born, yeah. that's a week, you should start introducing them with a handful of uh, uh, Foucault calf winner pellets. That will make sure that the rumen start developing uh, what we call papillas, and now you'll be able to utilize the normal forage as early as, po as, early as possible. And also it helps to increase microbial uh, levels in the rumen. And now that one will enhance digestion. And you know when digestion is occurring or happening in the, in the body, the animal will be actually growing up. So you start introducing calf winner pellets as early as, po as possible. Okay? Yeah. Up to three months when she is weaned, you start giving them young stock pencils. We are targeting the calves to grow at 400 grams per day. day. From weaning to being an ava, that is from three months all the way to eight months, we are preparing the foundation of this animal so that uh, she will be able to come on eat as early as, po as early as possible. That is at between 10 months to 15 months. And within that period, she will be able to gain actually about 700 grams. That is per day. Up to the time she will be made now, she will be around 200 kilograms. Okay? Alex, what else should the farmer give the calf? The farmer should also give uh, the calf some minerals. To get the best cows from your calves, Feed them well and make sure they have minerals, lots of water, fodder, and don't forget to spray them. There's another expert mm -hmm. that is waiting for Fred to talk about ECF. Okay. Let's go meet him. Okay. Thank you so much, Alex. Welcome. All right, let's go. This calf is alive and should now grow well. But Frederick lost a few calves in the past. Hey, we're not dead. Okay. Now, Frederick, could you tell our expert what happened to your calves? Yeah, I lost my two calves. Mm, for the big one, it had a very high temperature, mm -hmm. that's high fever, mm -hmm. and the breathing was very difficult. Mm -hmm. So when I went for the doctor coming back, I mm -hmm. found the animal dead. Mm -hmm. That high fever which causes very rapid death, it's always good to find out if it could be ECF. Uh, ECF. Yeah. What is ECF? East Coast fever is a, a disease which is spread by ticks, particularly that small brown tick that is found around the ears. Around here, I've mm. seen a lot of those ticks. The most important sign that most people see is just the temperature going up. Yeah. And at a later stage, you may see them coughing. Okay. If the cow was milking, you see a, a drastic reduction in milk production. In Kenya, we are losing up to a million cattle every year. The best way that is now working is vaccinating your cattle against this year. The dose comes in a pack of 40. How many cows do you have? Three. Yeah, it would be best if you just did three and throw away the 37 doses. So you are giving me an assignment to go and round up 40 cows? Yes. You go and see Naomi. Thank you very much. Right. I haven't got much time to gather 37 more cows. I hope the neighbors are at home. Great! Three more cows! Two more! Eva can get to 40 cows, we'll vaccinate them by the end of the day. While Tony is getting the cows, Frederick and Helen need to meet our experts from Soil Cares. Helen thinks they need a fertilizer to plant their maize, but Frederick doesn't think they need fertilizer because the soil is already fertile. Uh, if you say your soil is fertile, yeah. what exactly do you mean? We look at the color of the soil. Okay. When we find it black, yeah. we call it fertile soil. The color of your soil uh, does not necessarily indicate the level of uh, fertility. Have you ever had your soil tested? I've never done it. You've never? Yeah. Aha. yeah. So Austin, what is the value of soil testing? 
we did a test for a farmer just nearby. Right, right. I would uh, prefer if I would take uh, Bona Fred here and right. uh, Madame Helen so that I could show them how well the farmer is doing after doing the soil test. Paul lives very close and has an impressive crop in his field. Uh, so, so Paul, you had your soil tested about how many months ago? Five months ago. Five months ago, before planting the maize? Yes. So what were the uh, test results? The soil acid was high. Uh, oh, the soil acid was high? Yes. Mm -hmm. The other problem was the nitrogen level was low mm -hmm. and the potassium low, the level was low. So what does that mean, Austin? Uh, what it means is that uh, mm. when the soil acid is too high, Right. There are some nutrients that become unavailable to your plants. Mm -hmm. In Paul's case, if he had planted his maize at the time, mm -hmm. um, he would have harvested very little because um, first there would have been issues of stunted growth. If mm. you have uh, low nitrogen levels, mm -hmm. then um, you get problems where um, the older leaves in your maize plant, mm -hmm. um, they start uh, becoming yellowish. Mm -hmm. and. Um, when you have problems with the potassium, then you start having white spots and uh, the plant generally dies. So what did you do? I applied the agricultural lime. I applied to the NPK mm -hmm. when I was planting. Aha! Uh -huh. Was that the right thing to do? Adding agricultural lime, um, it reacts with the acid and uh, by neutralizing the acid, it raises the pH. Mm -hmm. So adding this, uh, the required amounts of fertilizer to your farm, as uh, he did. Mm -hmm. um, boosts the levels uh, in the soil right. and so the plant is able to take up the nutrients. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he did a good job. I can see he, he did a really good job, I can see. Yeah, you can see this, yeah, right? Seen, yeah. Yeah. Frederick, yeah. you see <laughs> the yeah. benefits of soil testing? When you do a soil, uh, a soil test, yeah. you can be able to tell all this just from one test. Congratulations, Paul. Right, and Frederick. Yes. Now, are you going to have your soil tested? Yeah. Yeah? Yes. So we can go back and have it tested? Yes. Okay, okay. Helen? Yes. Okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> To take a soil sample, use a soil auger or panga to take a slice of soil from the surface to one foot deep. Go in a zigzag pattern across the field, taking at least 10 samples from each field. Label the bag clearly with your name, number and the field and the crop. Now, we have to wait a few hours for the test results to come back. The soil test report is here. They have the same problems as Paul and he needs to add lime to correct the acidity. Then at planting, they will need to add NPK and again a top dressing. So the soil might be a nice color, but it needs a lot of work. Hi Naomi. Hi. So we have found out the benefits of giving cows good nutrition. And also, I'm making good, good progress in finding cows to vaccinate. Well, that's great. I've also shown Frederick the benefits of having soil tested. And as you know, in his shamba, Frederick is a real expert. So, we've asked him to give us the number one top tip in farming. The farmer should be encouraged that they don't plant one crop in a farm. So, you will find that they don't miss money and time. So when you harvest maize, you know that you have money during the maize harvesting season. At the times you will harvest the bananas and you will get money from the bananas. At the times you will sell the sugar cane and they get money from the sugar cane. So it is good to encourage the farmers that we plant different types of crops in our farms. Wow, what a great idea. Well, Naomi, I've got to go and see if I can get more cows to vaccinate. Okay, bye. Coming after the break, we will look at the main store and vaccinate the cows. Welcome back to Shamba Shepherd. We are in Kisi County. And we are visiting Frederick and Helen Maake. We've made progress on the soil health. And on the health of the cows. But you still have to vaccinate the cows against ECF. First, we need to store maize so it can be sold when the price is high. Jafet has been checking out the maize store. 
If Frederick wants to make a profit from his maize, he needs to sell it when the prices are high, so his store needs to be in good condition. I think Japheth has some tips for Frederick. Japheth? Yes. So what do you think? When Dom says they're trying, yes. but they, so there are some problems I've seen. Uh -huh. So the first, uh, Frederick, yeah. you amaze, you squeeze them to the walls. Okay. Because when they touch the wall, uh -huh. sometimes they, they, the maze can be spoiled. Yeah. Or it can be rotten. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. He has just placed them close to the window pane. Uh -huh. So sometimes when it rains, if there are some holes, uh -huh. so water can enter to the walls, uh, Frederick. Again, you fill your sacks to a place that you cannot get a place to tie. Okay. Again, I've seen that the sacks you are using, you are being forced to apply some actelic dust. Okay. Then again, at the floor, yeah. there is some dust. It's not the, the store is not clean. Mm -hmm. okay. So you need to try and make your store to be clean. To store the maize properly, dry the maize completely before putting it in the bags and close the bags tightly. Clean the store well. Make sure it is very dry and put the bags on the pallets so they don't touch the walls or the floor. Stack the bags horizontally. If you use ordinary sacks, you have to use chemicals to stop pests, which isn't always good for your health. So is there a better way of, you know, of uh, keeping the green? We have uh, the improved uh, crop storage packs. Okay. So if you are going to use them, I think they are going to be economical for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because uh, one of the advantages of using the bigs is mm -hmm. you are not going to apply the actelic dust. Okay. Again, the, the bigs, they are uh, durable. Mm -hmm. okay. So uh, they can keep your maize for, uh, I can say, more than five years. We are going to show you practical on how to, to store the maize. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Pigs yeah. bags hold 90 kilograms of maize each. If the bag has been used before, make sure it is clean and has no holes. Do not wash it with water. Put the two plastic bags in the outer sack. Fill the inside bag with dry grain, leaving enough space at the top to tie the bag in a note. Shake the bag to get the air out of the grain. Tie the first bag in a note. Then, tie the second bag in another note. Then, tie the outer sack in a note. Lay the pig's bags on the pallets in the clean, dry store and wait for the maize prices to go up. At the place of storage, mm -hmm. yeah. should there be some space from one bag to another bag? Mm -hmm. With that one, there is no problem provided. Okay. You arrange them, they should not be standing up because they can fall down easily. Okay. So you need to lay them to be flat. flat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you can put one on another, yeah. depending on the amount of uh, bags, you, the, the number of bags you have. Where do I get the bags? If you enroll to be a member of one acre fund, yeah. automatically you have the opportunity to get the pigs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. If you want a pig's bag, you can also send a message to Shamba Shaper, and we can tell you where your nearest stockist is. Mm -hmm. So we encourage our farmers to store at least three packs of maize until March next year, mm -hmm. normally we know that's the time when the supply will be low and the demand will be high, so the farmer is going to sell at mm -hmm. a higher price. Mm -hmm. So when he's going to sell, uh, for example, if I say right now they are selling at Kenya shillings, 50 shillings per 2 kg, at March the prices will be around 80 to 100 Kenya shillings. So the farmer is going to make a double price. So we encourage our farmers to store three packs of maize mm -hmm. until March next year when we anticipate that the prices will be high. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's for maize three by three. That's the meaning of three, three by, by three. three. Yeah. Uh -huh. So if you make a double price, this money is going to enable you either to pay school fees to your child mm -hmm. or you can use this money to build a house. If you don't have a cow, mm -hmm. then the, the money will enable you to buy a cow. Yeah, I'm getting. I'm You're comfortable. getting now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm very comfortable. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What the, why is it important to vaccinate against ECF? By vaccinating your cattle against ECF, you protect them for life. What's yeah. the process? So the first process is to get the animals which are supposed to be vaccinated. We examine them. We want to rule out any which is weak, any which is sickly. And we want to see if there's any which is expecting. 
Ideally for 40 animals, if well restrained, we take one now. Now that yeah. we have vaccinated the animals mm. in the evening, mm. can I take the milk? We recommend that you don't use the milk for the next three days, three days. but you continue milking. If you don't milk, the cow will fall sick, yeah. but you don't use the milk in the next three days. Like this evening, I will start 30 liters of milk. Yes. Now, where do you think I'm going to take the milk? Because I'm not going to use it. Can I give the calves? The calves can take it, because the calves will still suckle. Okay. Yes, mm -hmm. but let's not use it for humans. After we have vaccinated the cows, yeah. Will they exhibit any signs of ECF? Some animals, because of the status of the body, may show some signs of weakness in the next three or four days. Yeah. That's normally very okay. Yes. I think now we start vaccinating. Yeah. All right. Good. Let's get to work. Yeah. Finally, I've got 40 cows ready for vaccination against ECF. First, the vets check if the cows are all healthy by looking at their temperature and the leaf nodes. The healthy ones that are older than one month and not in calf are put in a crush. They are weighed using a weigh band and injected with antibiotic and then dewormed. Then the cows are vaccinated. There we are. When they have been vaccinated, they are ear tagged so you can see every cow that has been vaccinated. So how was the vaccination? Vaccination was uh, very nice. Very many farmers turned up mm -hmm. because the vaccination was very expensive. Yeah. When they came together as a team. Right. They can do a lot. Yeah, they can, they can do a lot. Right. Yeah. I've run more from Samba Shape Up. Uh -huh. Yes. I've tried more and more from there. Yes. I'm going to work very hard. Oh, great. For Samba Shape Up. Yes. Yes. Wow. Thank you. You too can learn a lot from Shamba Shape Up by using our SMS service or by calling our call center. Farmers. Do your chicken have scaly legs? I know how you can fix that problem. See, my chicken are healthy. I joined iShamba and I receive free farming advice every week. If you want to join, send the word join to the number 21606 and they'll call you back. So Frederick, yes. do you think you're going to get in touch with us? Very much so. So Helen, are you going to use our SMS service? Yes, okay. I'm going to use it. Okay, great. Okay, off to the next chamber. Chamber Shape Up is also online. Visit us at shambashapeup.com. Select the episode and click play. You can also visit Chamber Shape Up's Facebook page where you can enter great competitions and also get involved in great, great discussions. Chamber Shape Up is also on Twitter at Chamber Shape Up.